Consider for a moment this painting by Remedios Faro, one of the lesser known female artists who flourished in Mexico City in the mid 20th century. Spanish born Faro worked alongside many Mexican artists, including Frida Kahlo, as well as other European immigrants. Faro was one of many women associated with surrealism, an intellectual movement that began in Paris in the early 1920s as a response to the personal and cultural crises faced by the West after World War I. Under the informal leadership of French author and poet André Breton, the artists and writers who participated in this movement were inspired by Freudian psychology, Marxist ideology, and a fascination with automatism. During or after World War II, many of the artists were exiled or fled to Mexico, where the female artists in particular were able to more freely explore the creative process, free of the societal and patriarchal constraints they faced in Europe. Identity was a key theme in the painting and writing of the female surrealists. Art was a way for them to make sense of their role as women in the male-dominated spheres in which they lived and worked. Yet, how do we today make sense of these sometimes bizarre and seemingly fantastical paintings? We are given a glimpse into the artists' inner thoughts and private lives through their writing, both formal and informal. My research focuses on the literary production of Remedios Faro, examining her paintings in conjunction with her writing in order to more fully understand her artwork and identity as a female surrealist. Most of the artists associated with this movement were also authors, and through a reading of their journals, short stories, plays, and letters, one is able to reach a better understanding of their visual art. The writing of these artists, however, has received relatively little scholarly attention and criticism. Faro's literary works were not published during her lifetime. It was not until 1997 when Mexican publisher Ediciones Era published the first comprehensive collection of her writing that it was made widely available. The collection includes commentaries, short stories, personal journal entries, dreams, a play she wrote in collaboration with Leonora Carrington, and eight letters, which I have translated into English. These eight letters, which to date have only been published in Spanish, offer a critical lens through which to view and understand her art and the potential to increase her visibility as a surrealist artist. Faro's letters communicate her thoughts on friendship, art, and her daily activities in a style that combines reality and imagination, seriousness, and humor. Of her eight published letters, four were written to real people, while the other four were likely composed as creative exercises. Major themes in her letters include automatic writing, creation, experimentation, transformation, painting, and myth, among many others. Letter number three, written to an unidentified painter, contains a sample of automatic writing, that which is produced from the subconscious. Faro writes, this poem might seem cryptic at first glance, but the simplest of electronic machines so widely used today could analyze and clarify it. In letter number seven, addressed to a fictional Mr. Gardner, creation and experimentation are the central themes. The tone of this letter is characteristic of many others written by Varro, in which she describes the quandaries produced by her imaginative scientific experiments. She writes, I have a solar system, I do not enter into a detailed description of it all, it would be too long, which I can move at will, knowing in advance the effects that I can produce, although sometimes the incalculable happens, caused by the rapid trajectory of an unexpected meteor through my established order. The meteor is none other than my cat, but little by little I am becoming able to control this hazardous factor, now that I have discovered that. By exclusively feeding the cat sheep's milk, his trajectory produces almost no effect. The scenes depicted in many of Varro's paintings, such as Sympatia, which portrays a scientist of sorts and a cat, align with her letters, and when examined through the lens of her letters, reveal deeper and more complex meanings. Varro sought to create paintings that would reflect her own identity, but it is through a close reading of her letters that we begin to more fully understand the complexity of her identity as a female surrealist artist. Disregarding the roles imposed on her by European society, Faro eventually found freedom in Mexico, freedom to create art and recreate herself.